Dr. Ramey, talk about the behaviors that caregivers should adopt to help build a young child's language. Well, we have identified seven kinds of behaviors that parents, teachers, older siblings, anyone who loves and cares about children should adopt. And these are based on literally thousands of scientific studies. And what's really neat about these seven learning essentials is that everyone has been linked to brain development as well as to behavioral uh, competence, to intelligence, to happiness, to uh, a sense of well-being. So the seven essentials of learning. You are going to tell us. I'm going to tell you. The first is to encourage exploration that the child touches the world, tastes the world, looks at the world, and as the baby gets older, you do it through talking and demonstrating, but to be open, to actively experience, not passively, to actively explore the world. The second is to mentor the child in what we call the basics, and mentoring is just teaching with love, with the well-being of the learner. Uh, central to your activities and some people say well what do I teach him it's like what words teach him anything that you like teach him anything you know teaching is good give us an example of mentoring because we often think of mentoring as someone who comes in from the outside and engages with the child oh, a short period of time is that what you're talking no, about? no when I'm with my little baby granddaughter I teach her oh, up and down and I go up I go it fell down and I'm mentoring her because I'm thinking about her well-being and her ability to learn the idea of up and down. And then I might say, up and down, those are opposite. They're not the same. They're, but up, and then, I mean, we might find other things that are same. And that's, mentoring is really teaching where you care about the well-being of someone else. You're not doing it to elevate yourself. You're doing it for them. Mm -hmm. uh, so you encourage them to explore, you mentor, and then when they learn something, you celebrate, you reinforce. You, every culture celebrates walking and talking, but there, every day is something new to celebrate. It's not just saying you're great or you're smart. It's, oh, you did that, and linking it to the child's behavior. Then, after you celebrate the new behavior, practice time. Mm -hmm. So you rehearse, you review, you extend the new behavior because every behavior can be used in a more sophisticated way. It's multi-purpose. So you help the children get good at what they've learned. And then in the whole process, you always think about protecting the child from inappropriate punishment and teasing and a kind of harshness that's not right for their age. So there, we've, we've watched teachers and parents who deeply care about their children, and they want their children to be well behaved, and they land up punishing them or being mean to them when they're real little and they can't understand why someone's doing that. And being mad at them, I mean, a child who's crawling around is going to grab a cord, and if the baby's only 11 months old, they don't know it's electrical, and they don't know it's attached to something that can break. And you can yell and scream and get mad, but the child won't get the idea because they've got little pull toys mm -hmm. that you tell them, and they can't tell the difference. So you don't get mad at a child for something they don't yet understand.